ever-growing debate surrounding transgender women competing in female sport has continued this week with Riley Gaines front and centre. The former competitive college swimmer, along with 15 other athletes, have officially sued the National Collegiate Athletics Association, or the NCAA, over its transgender policy. The official policy allows for inclusivity, provided that transgender athletes document their testosterone levels between a four-week to six-month period. The 16 college athletes, however, do not believe in that policy and have filed the lawsuit, citing the NCAA has violated the Title IX, the Equal Protection Clause and the right to bodily privacy. What I will say is that the NCAA cannot continue to run from accountability and responsibility and upholding the federal civil rights law that is Title IX. Um, so stay tuned. Now, this move comes the same week that both Sharon Davies and Caitlyn Jenner, two prominent former athletes, were featured in an article for The Telegraph campaigning to protect female sport. One quote read, We have such a small piece of the cake and now we're supposed to move over for mediocre male athletes identifying as females. Another read, Why is it that women are always the ones that have to kind of give in? Now, we've spoken about this subject before and we've done it a few times on Madwell, but this is interesting. 16 collegiate athletes suing the national kind of body for allowing this to happen. What did you guys think? Well, I think it's firstly, um, this is America after all, which is quite yes. a litigious country. So I'm <laughs> glad that they're doing it the American way and trying to sue the pants off the people who have <laughs> deprived them of opportunities. But I think it's quite right because actually, you know, I've in these debates, there are occasions where, for example, um, on an occasion, perhaps you may get a biologically female athlete who actually does beat um, the biologically male athlete from mm. time to time. And obviously that's a greater, a much greater achievement for, for the biological female to have done it. And this is often used as an excuse um, by those on the kind of pro-trans, sort of anti-biological reality side of the debate. But actually I often think about, for example, let's say you're in the final eight of a heat. There was a biological female that wasn't even gift afforded that place that they they rightly earned. This, this, these are definitely just causes for mm. uh, for suing, and I'm, I'm glad that that things are going in this way because the po policy that you mentioned in your opener there about how it all comes down to registering testosterone yeah. levels. I mean that certainly doesn't cover the full gamut of possibilities there. For example, bone density is is also a very important factor mm. in simple you know size muscle strength mm. etc the idea that it can all be determined by testosterone mm. ignores is is anti-science anti is, especially when they're playing with the testosterone via whatever yes you know medication or right. i thought the interesting thing on that point maddie is that riley Gaines obviously came to kind of national attention when she started speaking out about it and the reason why she started speaking out about it, it was because of the race that she versed, the college swimming race that she versed Leah Thompson, mm. who, Thomas, who won the race probably more so on length. She's 6'4", mm. and Riley was 5'5", five five, which is what she said on the podcast with Joe Rogan last week, where she was just said, look, it's it's unfair. It is, it's a sport where your height is very much an advantage. Yes. Yeah, I think that's right. And I think, look, uh, I'm, I'm 6'3", and when I play squash against Maddie, she still beats me every single time. So, you know, you can't always... I'm glad we worked that's... that into the, into the script. <laughs> I think that's a you problem, that's, that's James. A, exactly, that's a me problem, exactly right. But I think this goes to a broader point now that people are finally just, not just speaking up, but getting mm. organised on this issue, right? The UK has actually led the way in a lot of these things. People like J.K. Rowling didn't need to weigh into this broader debate and is doing so. I can't imagine that J.K. Rowling was the sportiest person in the world. She spent too yeah. much time in coffee shops writing books Riding about boy books. wizards. Great of her. But you know, she, she knows the value of these things and more and more people are doing it. Mm. You're thinking, well, why should I just put up with it, right? If you're, if you're a teenage swimmer and you get to be a, I don't know, a state champion and all these things, that's a huge amount of work, mm. as, yeah. as Mads yeah. points out, right? Yeah. And to have all this taken away, why should you just lump it? Mm. I think it's great they're getting organised. I agree, especially for, especially for college swimmers where you, obviously you've spent your entire I mean uh, Riley when I listened to her on Joe Rogan it was really interesting talking about her routine during yeah. her high school years and the amount of work that went into trying to get into a university and obviously a lot of these college uh, athletes are trying to get scholarships as well so you would obviously feel very disheartened yes. if your place is taken by a biological male I completely understand I'm obviously I'm all for everyone doing what they want to do I, but I do understand the debate when it comes to transport of course and 
we, we talk about this at the elite level, it's very important. There's, it's a, a horrible thought to think of the amount of work that would go and say to a biologically female swimmer, mm -hmm. just to shave like a, a tenth of a second off their time. That would take hours and hours and hours for the, even the slightest advancement. And someone who is, hasn't put in even a fraction of that effort is able to score a similar time or even beat them. I mean, it's obvious what's going on there. But I think it also has a, an effect all the way down to sport at a, at a less competitive yeah. level. Because if little girls see their sporting heroes being beaten and they see obviously biological males on podiums, mm. I think that has an effect on, on morale. And um, you've got to think about, you know, the, 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 the future of sport in general. It's not just a question of mm. athletes at the very top of the game. But it also just, I mean, swimming is one thing. It's bad enough. The worst thing that could happen, what, you accidentally bump into the wall or something. <laughs> but in, in, in violent physical contact mm. sports, we're starting to see this happen as well now, mm. right? You know, play a lot of rugby. If you've got a big, hairy, six foot three person <laughs> up against uh, you know, a you team full of violent women's, right? Or even in, in, in proper full contact or anything else, where does this stuff stop? Mm. Because if your ideology is, nope, that person is every bit as much a woman as anybody else, then what's to stop that person going into a boxing ring and fighting yeah. this woman and causing serious damage? That is true. And also, so I think from a broader spectrum of, you know, just the kind of emphasis on female sport, it has taken a really long time for people to be interested in female sport. Yeah. They still aren't. Yeah. I mean, I remember going to my netball games and my dad would be like, sorry, I've got to watch the boys play rugby. <laughs> or, or like, you know, the, the amount of effort that the AFL women's code has taken to get people yes. interested in the women's, in the women's games over the male AFL games, which is Australian Rugby League, which is everyone is just obsessed with, you know, back at home. So it's kind of just, well, you know, we've done the hard yards, but I want to read out this quote and, and get your thoughts on it. One of the quotes from that article from The Telegraph was that men wouldn't put up with it. So I want to ask you guys, if the roles were reversed, and obviously there are examples that the roles are reversed, but if the roles were reversed, do you think that men would be putting up with it? Well, I think that, I suppose it does depend on the sport because there are some disciplines where there is less of an obvious physical advantage. Like, I don't know, something like archery, for example, versus like boxing. I mean, there's there's obviously some sports are going to be more effective than others. But, you know, in most sports, the involvement of women, frankly, and I'm not saying this, I'm, I loved sport as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a young person and I take it very seriously. But there's no way that if I, in my tennis competitions when I was a teenager, if I'd been put in the boys' run, it wouldn't even have made any difference yeah. to them whether I was there or not. However, the alternative would have completely undermined every female tennis yeah. tournament that I played in. I mean, let's, we, that sort of implies that women and men are exactly biological, but biologically the same. Mm. Um, that's not the case. And sometimes that can lead to something rather wonderful, the fact that women's tennis is actually a very different sort of game to men. They play it differently. It's... I know people who prefer one or the other. You know, you can make your choice, but what you can't do is merge them together and mm. pretend it's exactly the same. Or at least mixed sport is an amazing thing to do, to play mixed sport in general, with not at obviously competitive level. It's great. I, I loved the thought that, you know, men were keen to play a game of netball with the girls. It's great. But I do think that this will become a more contested subject going forward because I do think that there are probably a lot of women who are kind of hiding in the shadows, concerned but not ready to voice their opinion for fear it might, you know, be an anti-trans remark when I don't think necessarily voicing concern for, you know, equal an equal playing field in a sporting code is, I don't think that's anti-anything. I think that's just standing up for your eyes.